There has been some discussion about all the insulation material that has shown up on top of the classroom building. From a distance, it looks like they are adding a thick layer of roof decking. In other words, not overkill, but design efficiency. Patty Fuque, who has an excellent view of the school roof, made these observations as to what they are doing. One, layer of plywood. Two, layer of tar paper, melted to seal seams. Three, two overlapping layers of insulation. Four, large square semi-stiff sheets of tar paper. Five, layer of rolled tar paper again, sealed. The first picture is hers. Don Ryder also took a photo, but at a larger magnified scale. That would be the second picture. It was foggy, really foggy this morning. A couple of trucks arrived and the drivers just sat there with their parking lights on, waiting for a pump or a mixer or somebody to tell them what to do. There was a big pour to the north. It was being done with a boom to get the slurry to the poor spot. And then to the south, just a pump and a long hose took the slurry to where they wanted it, probably on the ground floor. Still more insulation was found up on top of the roof. It looks like a styrofoam roof now. The big white packages today are similar, but not identical to yesterday's. If you look very closely at the second photo, you may see one of the two blow torches, no doubt used to seal the fabric cover. Like yesterday, there was a lot of morning fog. When it lifted, there was the good old concrete pumper pumping away. The slurry was going through a hose over the wall down to the east outside wall. The first picture shows this operation. There were a few more dump trucks than usual today. On an average, they were removing sandy, soggy soil and taking it south on SR 900. The second photo is of the roofing job. It's high res, so you should be able to see if you can figure out exactly what's going on. One thing for sure is that the several bright orange buckets are used to hold down the sandwich roofing material while it dries. Every so often I like to add a bit of mystery to the construction story. This evening's mystery has to do with proper perspective in one of the portable offices, the one with the three windows facing to the west. I noticed it is acting like an isometric drawing, one where the parallel lines stay parallel, the red lines, not like reality where they converge at the horizon, the beige lines, also known as the vanishing point on the horizon. So, who cares? Not many of us. The other photo shows a change from Winsteep. Tyvek, or some other kind of outside wall insulation, has been added. The yellow section. I believe that I have written before about the rollers, the construction equipment used to smooth and flatten the ground. The roller was working today. I knew this, not because I could see it, or not because I could hear it, but because I could feel it. The roller motor created a vibration that could be easily heard, just like the other equipment, but it was the only equipment that I, for one, could feel. The first photo shows the Komatsu excavator, the dump truck, and trailer, and the roller. More important than vibrations, the use of a roller now may mean that the digging in this area is now at or near the field level at completion. The number for level zero, the field, is 218 feet above sea level. By the way, the dirt is still going south, one double dump truck at a time. The yellow wall insulation material is creeping around to where I can see more of it. With the visqueen hanging in front of the insulation, it is hard to see exactly how it is installed. The second photo shows this. The crane with the big black boom used its height to lift several white plastic bags up to the roof. See the first photo. The big event was two separate pours on the south side of the phys ed area. One pour was done with a small pump and boom. This kept going all day. The other was done without a boom. Both seemed to be onto the first level floor. Often the pours done without booms are for shot creep. See the second photo. The third photo shows the extension of a fence on the rooftop. Another significant event was the installation of windows, glass, on the east side of the classroom area. Werner took this colorful shot. 
I saw one of the drills, DMI, up by the main gate being loaded onto a very flat flatbed for return to the owner. And then there was another drilling holes for I-beams to be inserted near the car lanes and the field. These to be used in a similar manner as the long rows of vertical beams along the bus lanes, all of which become a retaining wall. See the photo. The second photo shows the mini flamethrowers, maybe, in action sealing the edges of the roof fabric over the classrooms. The last photo shows the continuation of the shot crete spraying on the retaining wall on Talus Drive. Well, it just really shows the concrete mixers in the pump. The assumption is a hose and sprayer are on the east side of the wall. The first photo was taken by Patty Fuque. It is of the cornerstone office and the adjacent dig for the school garage. Just to the left, to the north, of the office is a mass of concrete. This is an old retaining wall. There have been steel stairs lying around in the storehouse. More will be needed to complete the job. More arrived today and were unloaded. See the photo. Drilling by the DMI subcontractors is starting to come to a conclusion. Their work is on a last retaining wall between the field and the cars and the parking area. See the photo. The poor started yesterday continues in the lowest level of the phys ed building. It is accomplished by a pump with no boom. Six nearby packages await unwrapping. It is my guess that they are not the penguins we saw last week, but rather six R2-D2 robots waiting to be unwrapped and to start to work. The first photo shows the continuation of the shot creek on the east wall. All those bags over there should be covered eventually with a coating of shot creek. The second photo is of the installation of the steel stairs. They're circled. Two flights were in place by the end of the day. The steps are probably to be concrete, which could be easily added by a worker with a trowel and a bucket of concrete. The third photo shows the arrival of still more precast concrete forms to go with the storm water system. The items were then distributed to where they eventually should go. There were just a few workers today, so it is an opportunity to send along some recent photos that others have taken, in this case Don Ryder. See the photos.